Learning how to automate stuff in Python is a great skill to have. It's something that I started doing when I was learning and something I still do today, even though I have access to modern APIs, etc. So if your job revolves you around using a browser based system, then we can absolutely automate good parts of it using Playwright. So Playwright is browser automation in Python. Uh, and we're going to be leaning heavily on its code gen feature, which is going to do the majority of the heavy lifting for us. I'll show you what I mean. So I've got VS Code open here and I have a new folder. So what you want to do is you need to install Playwright like this, pip install Playwright. I've obviously already got it installed. The next thing you want to do is do Playwright install and type Chromium. So we only want to install the Chrome browser because that's the one we're going to be using. If you install the other ones, they'll just be there for until you delete them, no need. Now we want to do Playwright code gen like this. This is going to open up a couple of extra windows and I'm going to move these over to my other screen just so we can go through them. So what they do is the one on the left is the current code and the one on the right is the browser. So as we make changes to the browser page it's going to record the uh, appropriate action in the actual code itself. So I'm going to paste in a URL here and we'll see we now have this page dot go to. The next thing you want to do is uh, fill in any login details that you need. Now this is already filled in here so I'm just going to just leave that at the moment and hit login. But ideally you want to click on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'll just move this uh, over a little bit so it's a bit easier to see. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new discount in this e-com system. So I'm going to click promotions then discount. Notice how the things are changing on the left hand side. Now I'm going to go to add new. There's another click, but dot click. So let's give it a name by clicking in the name box and we'll just call this 50 off discount assigned to total order. Click the use percentage and then we're going to put 50 in here. Now we want to add a coupon code. So let's just do 50 off as the coupon code and we're going to do a start date and an end date. Now I'm going to do this by clicking on this to see if this works, but you could of course type into the box here the date and times that you need. Now I'm going to hit save and done. That's it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and stop recording. Let's copy all of this and paste it into our code here and then close out these two browsers here. So now we have the basis of what we need to do to basically automate that large part of our job. We've gone ahead and we've logged in. We can see that happening here. I only clicked on the email and password, remember, because that was already in there. So if you need to add some text in here, click on it and then type the appropriate text in. Then you can see we're clicking on all these buttons. Now we are going to need to tidy this up a bit because it will probably fail at some point. So what we're going to do is we're going to click run. And then we'll see where it fails, see where it stops and make the appropriate changes. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so it's opening up the page, logging in fine, going to promotions. Okay, so we've hit our first sticking point. So let's close that out and it failed under the promotions. So where was going to promotions? So let's add in page dot wait for load state. This is the favorite one that I like to use and it is um, network idle like this. So let's try that again. Okay, so that worked. Creating a new one. This has worked. And as I expected, so it's failed on the uh, the date input thing here that hasn't worked. So we need another solution for that. So let's quickly, let's have a look at the selector for this. Um, okay, you can see it failed on this parent settings div. Okay, so let's just try commenting this out for the moment and seeing if we get anywhere. Okay. That seemed to work. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to import in time and at the bis before we close everything off, I'm going to put in time sleep and we'll say five seconds for now. But what you can do is you can actually change these bits of information. So I'm going to change this to 25 off 
and I'm going to change the name uh, to 25 off as well. So let's run it again. And this time the sleep at the end is just going to give us a chance to see that it actually did it. Otherwise, we can just log in otherwise. Again, there we go. Before it closes, we can see we have our 25 off. I actually left it as 50% off. So that's uh, that's probably something you'd want to avoid doing. But now you can see how powerful this is. That was only a few minutes using its code generator to whip through and create a script that actually creates something on the system. Now you have to be careful when you do this. You have to make sure that what you're doing is uh, repeatable because the browser is just running through the commands that you're giving it. So if things change, it will fail. But for completely repeatable tasks where the same thing happens over and over again, this is a great way to get it done. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy this one right here, which is more automation with Python, but this time for grabbing data.